geeks, nerds, gamers, and trolls. This is your MMO bomb first look at Raven Dawn, a top-down free-to-play fantasy MMORPG from Tavern Light Games. It's available now via client download, and in this first look, we're going to take a look at Raven Dawn and see what all it has to offer. As usual, this is not an expert guide or an in-depth review, just a first look to show you a bit of the game, help you decide if it's something you want to download and try for yourself. Now immediately you'll notice the odd camera angle, even for a top-down game, and it can make seeing things like doorways and stairs a little difficult at times, but you do eventually start getting used to it, and it becomes more natural the more you play. Graphically, there's a charm to the game that I personally like, but as usual, that's going to be subjective. Uh, but I'm digging the old school throwback visual style, and even the combat, as simple as it is, at least gives you several abilities to use. Now, this game is deeper than it might appear on the surface, with a number of systems in place that even some modern looking MMOs are lacking. There's multi classing, ability customization, a reputation system that gives you bonuses to your class, and also things like home ownership, farming, and animal husbandry. What it all boils down to is a game that may look old school, but is actually quite modern with the systems it has in place. I haven't gotten to the point of owning my own home yet, but the game does have a public farming area you can utilize, and in fact will utilize thanks to some quests to plant crops and raise animals. What I have gotten to see so far is the multi-classing, as I got to choose my second archetype at level 10, and I'll get to choose a third archetype later on. You can spread your ability points in any of these archetype trees you want, utilizing a mix of abilities and passives to customize your class the way that you want to. On top of that, there is a collectible card system you can use to customize your abilities by giving them bonus traits. You purchase these cards and packs from the in-game shop, but don't worry, they're only purchasable with an in-game currency you accumulate by playing the game. It is random pack opening, so you have no control over what you're going to get, but at least you're not spending real money for it. Speaking of the cash shop, I'm happy to report there are only cosmetics and services such as character renames available in the shop right now. Hopefully that doesn't change in the future, but as of the time of this recording, there's absolutely nothing pay to win available in there. The reputation system is based on the dialogue choices you make during quest interactions, and you can use reputation points to unlock passives like extra efficiency from ring or ambulance stats early on. It's a system that actually rewards you for getting your rep up and not just some useless number put there for arbitrary reasons. Character stats are important and you'll get that stat point to spend every time you level up. I initially just dumped all my points into Might, thinking that that would be the best use of my stat points being the Warfare archetype, but as I got further into the game I found myself also needing some Vitality and Dexterity. The Dexterity especially helps me out because it gives Spell and Weapon Defense as well as Haste, which helps shorten the global cooldown. And starting off that global cooldown is OP 1.5 seconds. We're talking Final Fantasy XIV levels of global cooldown here. So a bit of dexterity will help you out, even if you're running a build that's utilizing a different stat primarily. Now, combat isn't going to be anything that blows you away. It's as old school feeling as the game is old school looking. But there are a nice variety of skills available that, while don't do a lot for adding new attack animations, are important to utilize to get the most out of combat. There are some skills that offer different animations, but at least on the Warfare character I was playing, the skills mostly consisted of another axe chop that put some status on the enemy or did some extra damage. The other negative that immediately comes to mind about the game is the AI voice acted quest skippers. I get it, small studio, small budget, but the AI voice acting just sucks the life out of the game and I'd almost prefer that the quest just be text-based. That being said, it is important to pay attention to who you are talking to and what they are saying because it will make your life a little easier when looking for quest objectives. And you have the reputation system where the quest dialog will give you three responses to choose from. Choosing the right response for the right quest giver will result in more reputation and those sexy passive bonuses we talked about earlier. At the end of the day, this game offers deep class customization, useful reputation gains, and some old school nostalgia. But admittedly, it's not going to be for everyone. The combat can be repetitive and boring, but there is a certain charm to the overall presentation here that harkens back to MMOs of years past while offering some modern streamlining and features. 
It's a rare mix of old school MMO with modern systems and, and more of the nostalgia gems that are coming out these days should be looking to Raven Dawn on how to get the best of both worlds out of your game. Raven Dawn has struck a nice balance here of that old school feeling without making you feel like you're playing an old game, which too many other old school inspired MMOs do. And it seems to have struck a chord with a pretty sizable player base as well. They've had to add a second server, which is the one I'm on. And even the second server is pretty heavily populated. Constantly running into other players out in the world. And the open tagging system means we aren't fighting over mobs. So what are my final thoughts as a player who's just really getting started in the game? The AI voice acting isn't good. The combat can be a bit lackluster, but the charm of the game constantly shines through. I find myself enjoying my time in the game and looking forward to my next play session. I'm just now getting started in the reputation system and skill customization with the cards, and I just unlocked my third archetype, so I'm really just now dipping my toes in the water of what this game has to offer. So far, I have to recommend this game to anyone who thinks it looks interesting. The deep class customization is really interesting, and I'm excited to really start diving into the multi-classing as I get more skill points so I can afford to sink some more points into other trees. But that's going to do it for this MMO Bomb First Look at Raven Dawn. You can download the client from the game's official site. Just Google Raven Dawn MMO, and it should be your top result. Until next time, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, and head over to MMOBomb.com for the latest news and information on all the online games you need to know. Thanks so much for watching this first look at Raven Dawn, a game that I've definitely enjoyed my time in. For now, though, this first look is done, and I am out.